Hi everybody, I'm Jimmy DeYoung. Welcome to another edition of Prophecy Today Intelligence Briefing. The headline today, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, warns that China is a major threat to America. Ken Timmerman, my broadcast partner, will come to talk about that. But in addition, we'll also talk about the assassination of the top Iranian nuclear scientist and the retaliation that they are promising against Israel because of that assassination. China is going to be a major player, not only in the future, but of course is today as well. Ken's going to come in a moment to give us all the details on these stories and other additional stories from a geopolitical perspective as well. I want to remind you that I have a prophecy bookstore, and at my prophecy bookstore, I have a number of items, for example, like this DVD documentary entitled Rome Rising. We actually go to the Vatican, I go inside the church there, and we do a documentary on the reality of how this major church and our religiosity will play a key role in the end times. We start with looking at the history of Rome, then presently what they are doing, and then I stand in front of the church and teach Revelation chapter 17, which is the false church that will be on the scene in the first three and a half years of the tribulation period. This is a key documentary, a video that would be worth watching. You need to go to my website, prophecytoday.com, then go to the Prophecy Bookstore, and you can make your purchase of Rome Rising, a very important documentary. Well, we're going now to Ken Timmerman, who is at the broadcast table. We're going to be talking about the threat that China is not only to America, but the entire world. And I want to ask you immediately about an item that we discussed last week. We talked about Trump possibly doing a preemptive strike on Iran before the Biden presidency. We said last week that it would be on the table he had not made a decision, would partner with Israel. What do you know about that possible preemptive strike? Well, Jimmy, at this point, we're all just reading the tea leaves and reading reports of leaks from the White House. I'm very suspicious of those leaks from the White House. I don't think most of these left-wing reporters really have sources at the White House, or if they do, they're from deep state officials who despise the president and despise what he has been trying to do for the past four years. So I would say right now the jury is out. Uh, this president did not take office to start new overseas wars. He has refused to strike uh, Iran's nuclear facilities or its Air Force facilities in the past. He has given approval for the targeted killing of Qasem Soleimani, a very, very different type of attack. Remember that Qasem Soleimani was not killed in Iran. He was killed in Baghdad. Uh, when he was coming to order an attack on the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. That's a very different type of strike. That is the type of strike that Donald Trump could order. I really don't see him, knowing his character, uh, seeing his actions over the past four years, approving a military strike against Iranian nuclear facilities. He could go along with some Israeli strike of that nature. But again, look at what the Israelis are reported to have done, and that is to have eliminated the head of Iran's nuclear weapons program. That's very different from a hard military strike using aircraft, for example, or missiles against a ground facility or a buried facility. I think we would see eventually more of the same, but an actual military strike against nuclear weapons facilities, I don't think we're going to see unless there is hard evidence that the Iranians are doing the unthinkable, and that is mating a warhead to a missile. You know, I heard another report coming out of Washington, Ken. want to see what your thoughts are. It's saying that Trump has given up on his Iranian policy. He's told his Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, to do whatever he wanted to do, but don't start World War III. What are your thoughts about this report? 
Well, again, that's based on unnamed sources in the White House, so I tend to think this is one of those we hate Trump reports. Look, this president has shown all during his presidency he can do five or six things at once. <laughs> so this is not somebody who just says, okay, I'm checking out now on foreign policy because I'm worried about the re-election and want to take care of that, and I don't have time or bandwidth, mental bandwidth, to deal with it. That's not Donald Trump. He's shown that pretty consistently over four years. This said, you know, as I just said earlier, he does not want to start wars. This is not why he was elected president. He does not see that as his mission. And, in fact, he has repeatedly railed against the deep state and against neocons, as well as Democrats, who want to go around rattling America's sabers. Uh, that is not Donald Trump's M.O., and I don't see him doing that in the final days of his administration, if that indeed is the case. And meanwhile, in Iran, the leadership there want the nuclear deal put back in place, and seemingly so does Joe Biden. Your thoughts? Oh, absolutely. They are on the same page on this one. Biden's person he is designated as his secretary of state, Anthony Blinken, uh, was one of the architects of the Iran deal. Biden himself was a strong supporter of it. And the Iranians just love the idea of returning to a regime where the United States lifts all economic sanctions, allows them to sell oil around the world, lifts the sanctions on the Revolutionary Guards and the Quds Force, unbelievable, but that's what Biden would do if he returns to the Iran deal, and basically allows them a clear path to continue to expand their nuclear weapons production capabilities. That's what this is all about, their nuclear weapons production capabilities, so they would be able to break out of the nuclear deal at will at a future date. Seems that Iran is having some type of a dilemma, a nuclear dilemma, whether to ramp up their production of a nuclear weapon of mass destruction or wait for Joe Biden to come into office. But now let's focus just a moment. You mentioned earlier about the assassination of the nuclear scientists, the death there in Iran. What comes next? Is there going to be retaliation or you think they're just going to sit back and cool it for a bit because they could really get in trouble if they tried to retaliate? Well, the Iranians are claiming that Israel did this, possibly with the help of a uh, resistance group inside Iran. You know, for them to attack Israel, I think, would be a very dangerous thing. Uh, they could always order their Hezbollah proxies in Lebanon to launch missile strikes against Israel, and they have specifically said they want to target the port of Haifa. And Haifa is, of course, Israel's industrial center. It's where they have their oil refinery. I was there in 2006 on the front lines with that war with Hezbollah up in the north, and uh, we were hitting Haifa all the time by Hezbollah. And remember, they, they forced the evacuation of basically two-thirds of everybody who was up in the north to leave the area. So they can do things like that. I just don't see it happening. I don't see Iran provoking a war with Israel over the murder of a single individual who the Iranians uh, believe is replaceable anyway. Ken, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has been in the Middle East about a week ago. He is also in the European Union. He went to the last meeting of NATO that he will be able to attend in that position. But at that same meeting, NATO brought to the attention of all the member states that they must consider Chinese military power it is going to be stronger than everybody's been thinking about, and especially what the German foreign minister had to say. Give us an update. Well, this was pretty interesting to finally hear a European official, and in this case, the German foreign minister, not just anybody, but the foreign minister of the strongest economy in Europe to speak out about communist China and China's domination of Asia, uh, the threat that they pose to Europe's allies in Australia, Japan, New Zealand, South Korea. I thought this was pretty significant, and it's something that the U.S. administration has been talking about for a number of years. Remember, here's the difference, basically, between Democrats and Republicans now in the United States. Democrats like to uh, blame everything on Russia. They've been doing that for four years against Pre President Trump, claiming he is Putin's puppet and that Russia is expanding, that they're the real threat. But China's okay. And it turns out, of course, they say China's okay because China has been buying them off with investment deals to themselves directly, in the case of some of Biden's close aides, or uh, investment deals to family members 
as they did with Hunter Biden, offering him $30 million. So the Democrat Party has consistently been weak on China, and they've been weak on China for 25 years. I've been reporting on it for 25 years. The Republicans now, uh, especially with Pompeo and with the Director of National Intelligence, John Radcliffe, a former congressman, but somebody who is very well respected uh, for his grasp of the intelligence community, they have been warning about the China threat, the rise of the Chinese Navy. Uh, Radcliffe gave a recent briefing to Congress, but also to former Vice President Joe Biden uh, about China's military capabilities, and he warned that, look, China already has more surface warships than the United States. They've been building amphibious landing craft at an alarming rate, and uh, amphibious landing craft are not peaceful defensive ships. They are used to land an amphibious landing group, like the Marines, on foreign shores, and China has long, long warned that it would invade Taiwan at some point to make them rejoin China. So uh, I think that the fact that NATO is finally looking at China is significant, and also this fact that the DNI, John Radcliffe, has warned the in, you know, the former vice president of the China threat is significant. I doubt Biden's going to listen to it, but I think it's significant nevertheless. And according to Bible prophecy, Revelation chapter 16 and verse 12, the world had better wake up to the power of China. Red China, we should say. Very important report. Thank you so much. Good report as always, Ken. We'll talk again next week. Thanks so much, Jimmy. It's a pleasure. God bless. Ken Timmerman reporting on what should be getting the attention of America, but especially whoever the next president will be and his administration. China has a desire to be the number one power economically and militarily. In fact, that is their goal, and I see from Scripture that they will achieve that goal. If you have a moment, take your Bible and open up with me to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation 16 is the passage of Scripture that foretells the last seven of the judgments of the 21 judgments that happen during the seven-year tribulation period. We're going to look at number 20 of those 21 judgments. It's found in chapter 16 and verse 12, which tells about the kings of the east. Here's verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial. These are the six or seven vile judgments. This one's number six of the vile judgments. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Now, the river Euphrates is a natural borderline between the Middle East and the Far East. That river is going to be dried up to make way for the kings of the East to come into Jerusalem. Remember, I said this is the last half of the tribulation period. By this time in history, one half of the earth's population will have already been destroyed. That comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 6, and the fourth of the sealed judgments, when one-fourth of the earth is killed. And then in chapter 9, which would be the trumpet judgments, verse 16, it talks about another third, one-fourth, one-third. That is half of the entire world's population. But in the last three and a half years of the tribulation period, the kings of the east, now that would be China, India, and all of those far eastern nations out there, including Japan, North Korea, South Korea, Australia, all of those nations will come together to go against Jesus Christ at his return at the second coming. You see, every nation on earth, according to Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 2, says that all the nations will gather in Jerusalem. That half of the earth will include China, a major player today, but a major player in the end times. And the way this all comes about is that China, India, and these other Far Eastern nations will join in a partnership with the Antichrist. Back over here in chapter 13 of the book of Revelation, which is the most detailed passage of Scripture on the Antichrist, You can look at verses 14 and 15. The false prophet 
one of the members of the satanic trinity, Satan, Antichrist, and the false prophet. The false prophet will put up an image of the beast after the Antichrist, the beast in Revelation, has committed the abomination of desolation and desecrated the temple in Jerusalem. The Antichrist then will make his move over to Babylon, the literal city of Babylon on the shores of the Euphrates River, about 58 miles out of downtown Baghdad, and there set up a one-world economic, political, governmental system. China will have to partner with that Antichrist if they are going to be able to buy or sell or eat or provide for themselves to do that. Because verses 16 and 17 of chapter 13 of the book of Revelation tell us that the Antichrist will make every single person take a mark on the forehead or the back of their hand. Now, we're not sure what the mark is. Another time we'll talk about that on another Prophecy Today intelligence briefing. But it is going to be an identification mark that will allow the Antichrist to recognize those who will worship the Antichrist or they'll be killed, it says there in verse 15 of chapter 13. So we need to understand China will achieve its goals in partnership with the Antichrist. We see where China is today. We can understand where they're going to be in the future. And I'm talking from the scriptures about the last three and a half years of that seven-year tribulation period. And that follows what we refer to often on this broadcast as the rapture of the church. When Jesus shouts, the archangel shouts, the trump of God sounds, and we'll be caught up to meet him in the air. That is the rapture, and my dear friend, that could happen at any moment, possibly even today. And that is my prophetic perspective on the news today. I'm Jimmy DeYoung. Thank you so very much for joining us on this edition of Prophecy Today Intelligence Briefing. Be sure to come back again next time when we will continue to look at current events in light of biblical prophecy.